my name is Borja Rodriguez. I'm from the Behavioral and Cognitive Neuroscience Master at the Groningen, Groningen University. <laughs> and today I will present how depression influences uh, cognitive control. But first, I have a question for you. Please raise your hand if you agree. Have you ever struggled to focus or concentrate when you were feeling sad during your masters? <laughs> <laughs> So, so you are not the only one. In fact, 5% of the population have depression. It's one of the most common psychiatric disorders in the world. And it's 330 million persons in the world, which is as the entire population of United States would be depressed. However, this number is even higher when we look at the, the number that people will have depression throughout their life, which is one in five or 20%. And depression covers a broad spectrum of symptoms, including sad mood, anhedonia, and cognitive deficits. And this is one of the cores of the disorder, which includes uh, cognitive control. Cognitive control is our ability to regulate and coordinate our thoughts and our behaviors in order to achieve goals. It's this ability to avoid distractions. It's uh, our ability to regulate our emotions. So for instance, right now, you are maybe seeing your phone on the table or feeling it in your pocket. <laughs> um, you may have the, the urge to use the phone, however you establish the goal to not using the phone. I hope so, at least. So this is how cognitive control is involved. And it's involved, it's interrelated with other uh, cognitive processes, as attention and control, goal setting, cognitive flexibility, and information processing. So it kind of overlaps with all of them. Yeah. Um, then how it manifests in depression? It manifests as an ability, like interference in their ability to focus and concentrate, to remain focused for a long period of time, as negative uh, attention bias, a memory bias. What does it mean? Is you only focus in the negative stimulus, you only memorize uh, the, the, the negative stimulus. And cognitive control deficits has been extremely linked to depression. So the more cognitive control deficits you have, the more depression you have. And also, when we intervene with uh, cognitive uh, therapy, we improve also the depressive symptoms. And I, I want to ask you something, probably all of you are from the neuroscience background, but can we locate cognitive control? No. No? No, we can't? <laughs> well, we kind of can. <laughs> yeah. So for the ones uh, who don't have a, a background in neuroscience, this is a, a brain. <laughs> <laughs> Do my friends come to see us? I don't want them to get lost. So with functional, <laughs> so with functional magnetic resonance in meta-analytic evidence, like 5,000 people, uh, they found that the cognitive control is mainly located in the anterior cingulate cortex and the dorsolateral prefrontal cortex, like the deficits, I mean. And they found uh, uh, less gray, ma like gray matter reduction in these areas and also aberrant uh, activation. However, when we look at other neuroimaging techniques, such as uh, EEG resting state, like in electroencephalography resting state, so uh, here we have different human brain waves. So it's like different parts of your brain, a, a group of neurons, I find at different levels. So for instance, beta would be like, and then theta, like, very slow. <laughs> and then the, the deficits in these areas are exactly in the frontal area. So in depressive patients, we have, with cognitive control deficits, we will have a prefrontal uh, decrease in theta activity and increase in beta activity in the frontal area. So despite these findings, as, as you said, uh, we kind of don't know everything about cognitive control deficits. And there are some inconsistencies regarding the severity of these factors, the importance, the recovery after the remission, it means after the depression, they, even though they recover from the repression, the depression, they may have still some of the cognitive deficits. And some authors have suggested to uh, uh, turn this cognitive control assessment into a predictive tool, because if we can detect the cognitive control deficits earlier, maybe we can use a preventive cognitive therapy to prevent the symptoms of depression. And 
the current assessment uh, methods uh, may lack some of sensitivity and some adaptation because uh, you probably know all the uh, heterogeneity of the pressure. So uh, regarding to that, I want you to present uh, the thing that we are uh, using in our research to try to detect positive control deficits, which is uh, slim stamping. Slim stamping is an adaptive learning method that improves learning. So it's used for more than uh, one million person, and it basically uh, creates a learning model so you learn better and it's more uh, more efficient and more personalized for you. For instance, here, imagine you want to learn a new language. Uh, for instance, Swahili. And we have one word, Combian beer. So imagine you want to learn, I don't know, 50 words of Swahili. So each of you has different learning methods, different learning strategies. So this, this computer-based tool basically uh, turn this memory and learning process uh, based on research and convert that into algorithms and then with these algorithms, uh, it improves learning. So it creates a personalized learning model for each person. And this has been shown to be uh, better than traditional methods and flashcards. Um, it also calculates the rate of forgetting, which is how quickly you will forget an item. And this trait, this is a, like this assessment, is considered consider a memory trait. But you may wonder right now why I'm telling you all of this. So it's because uh, this, uh, this tool has been able to detect cognitive decline in Alzheimer patients. This is our ongoing research. So we thought, okay, maybe like this remains an exploring depression. So we may research that and we, we could be able to detect cognitive control deficits in depression. And also, uh, it's a learning task, right? But during when you want to learn a new language, you set a goal. So it's involving the, the goal setting. You need to remain your cognitive control because you want to be studying, you need to use your working memory, your attention. So we thought, okay, maybe we can ex extrapolate this rate of forgetting, which means uh, the higher rate of forgetting, the, the less you know, so the more you forget, to uh, detect this cognitive control deficit. A research question is, is the rate of forgetting able to detect cognitive control deficits? And the second research question is, are the EEG markers that predict cognitive control deficits able to correlate with uh, cognitive control deficits? With uh, the rate of forgetting, sorry. So our methods, uh, first, uh, we um, recruit participants from uh, Stalin's from Groningen um, using the depression and anxiety the stress scale from 103 participants, we took the 20% lowest and the 20% highest, so with more symptoms and less symptoms, and we wanted a sample from uh, 20 and 20 per group. And then uh, we assess them uh, with two questionnaires, the apathy motivational index and the uh, positive and affective, positive and negative affective schedule, because we because uh, we want to know their current mood and their current motivation just before doing the task. So we will measure them just before doing the, the learning task because even though you may have some depressive symptoms, your, your mood in the moment of studying also influence your learning <coughs> performance. So we want to take that into account. Then the EEG resting state will measure five minutes I close and five minutes eyes open, like a no particular task, just resting state. And then we will do uh, EG uh, with uh, EG recording during the learning task. However, this part is for another research, so we will not be focusing on the EG recording during the learning task. So what about the learning task? Uh, first, I want to ask you, do you remember which was the, the word that you say? Okay. So maybe some of you remember, but some of you <laughs> maybe not remember. So this is how it looks at test trial. This is how it looks, a uh, study trial, and this is the, the feedback. So uh, in each, uh, we will have four sessions, so four blocks uh, of seven minutes each one, so 28 minutes uh, the learning task, where they will learn uh, Swahili. Um, this is divided into study trials, test trials, and the feedback, and these study and test trials are scheduled with the algorithm, so 
with each person would be uh, one order and it would const constantly adaptate because uh, the rate of forgetting is constantly updating to each person and we will have a uh, four rate of forgetting each one for uh, one session and then we will have uh, some delay because we want to do a post test to know how many words uh, they have learned uh, if you have any question at the end uh, this is even more complex for the EEG purpose but I think it's not uh, relevant uh, today so so then what we expect or our hypothesis because uh, if this is an ongoing research, so we haven't finished it yet. But we expect that uh, this is the, the first session, this is the fourth session, and this is the rate of forgetting. As I told you at the beginning, it's from zero to one. However, it's mostly in these in these uh, parameters. And the higher the the higher the rate of forgetting, the higher cognitive control deficits, and the, the less you remember. So we expect that a uh, high depressed group has a higher rate of forgetting compared to a healthy group, okay? But we are more interested in another thing. So at the beginning I told you, you may struggle to uh, focus in not using the phone because you established uh, this goal. And <coughs> right now maybe you already have in the temptation because over the time we are losing some cognitive control. It's declining, we are losing attention. So uh, we also expect that there is no difference in between the non-depressed in the first session and the fourth session, so there is uh, the same cognitive control. However, there is a difference between the, the first session in the high depressed group and the fourth session in the, uh, uh, well, in the high depressed group. So the cognitive control is declining. And then regarding the EG expected results, so we expect uh, the theta activity uh, decrease in the depressive patients in the resting state and we expect that the beta activity increase so this has uh, there are already uh, papers about that with the rate of forgetting of sleep stamping and they found that uh, beta power activity increase uh, beta like this power correlates with the rate of forgetting so the more you forget the, the more cognitive control deficits you have the more beta power you have uh, during this period. So we hope to find uh, this correlation and maybe also we research the theta activity, but instead of positive correlation, negative uh, correlation. So as a conclusion, uh, because this is our ongoing research, so we hope to provide uh, learning, uh, we hope to provide a tool that it's able to detect cognitive control deficits because this is a uh, one of the most prevalent psychiatric disorders in the world, uh, which affect one in five persons throughout their life. So we think that uh, it's really important to target and assess uh, these deficits. Um, uh, several authors suggest that we should develop uh, new methods. Uh, I want to acknowledge all the people that it's collaborating also in this research, because I'm not the only one. My Jose, Hederick, Christine Cloquet, Marluz, um, this is my email if you have any question, the references. Um, before ending, I want you to give you a take home message. So at the beginning, I asked you, uh, have you ever struggled to focus or concentrate when you were feeling sad uh, during your masters? But it's also in the other way, it's a bidirectional process. So if you mind your cognitive control, your habits, the time that you spend uh, on your phone and the time that you spend learning, uh, learning a new language, that you remain focused, that you remain using your working uh, memory, it also influences your sadness, your emotional state. So it's uh, mind your cognitive control to ride your emotional waves. Um, thank you for your attention. You said that there's some input where it like tests your emotional and working memory, uh, uh, your whatever working memory, and then takes some algorithms and then gives you a new learning. Memory. Okay. Okay. So imagine you're right now in front of a computer and you have this screen, 
you are learning a new a new word. Okay, so like these uh, these algorithms, I just summary the memory process because it's based in uh, maybe you know the Ebbing Gauss curve on the spacing effect, the testing effect. So it's based on several process, and it turns this process of memory resets. I can share with you the reference if you want because that takes a long. But basically, it takes a memory process and convert that into algorithms. Uh, so it uh, takes into account the time that you takes uh, to respond something, the time that you are thinking, the time that you are uh, typing, all of this, the correctness of your response, how many times you fail uh, to predict how many times should I show you a new item. Is if I should show you a pombi beer in the next or in five trials, so there are several uh, process like that. Is, is that clear? Most yeah. clear? Yeah. But in the reference, the, there are the, the papers, or I can uh, see. Yes? Was there a particular reason why you chose Swahili? Uh, because people don't usually know Swahili. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yes because of that, because we wanted, uh, so this is from another paper, or uh, eight years ago or something, so they wanted uh, to research uh, in learning, uh, compare that to traditional methods, to flashcards, and they thought what language uh, should we choose, and they just uh, choose uh, one language that people don't usually know, so it could be any other language. Yes? Is there artificial intelligence expected results in these yeah. labs? Or these, are these actually like preliminary results, or are these from different studies? Or? Uh, the, this is yeah. yeah so we haven't like uh, this is not preliminary results it's just based on previous studies like okay. for instance this one is uh, from a previous study so this correlation between beta power and rate of forgetting uh, and this one is uh, it's hypothesis based on um, cognitive control deficits in healthy participants and their uh, brain activity so uh, because if you try to look in the literature at depression, like people with depression doing a cognitive control task uh, while they are recording their uh, EEG resting state, it's uh, really difficult because sometimes it's changed. Like instead of cognitive control, it's learning, on there is no depressive population. Uh, so we just base in another research. Like we hope to find that, but who knows? Okay. <laughs> So I think that was the last question that is <laughs> to have enough time for GD, but I'm sure you can ask some questions afterwards. Sure. So let's give one round more of applause.